Hey y'all and welcome to Netwood at Home. My name is Linda and thank you guys so much for being here. If you're brand new, welcome, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. And I'm super excited. <clears throat> so I have to tell you, if you've been on my channel at all, and you've seen any of my other milk glass videos, you know that I am extremely passionate about milk glass and milk glass collecting. I love the stuff. So that being said, today's video is all about Indiana Glass Company. And I'm super excited to share with you what I have. I actually have a pretty extensive collection. Um, a majority of it is um, the Harvest Grape pattern. However, I do have a couple of other pieces that are not harvest grape. So for those of you who don't necessarily love the grape patterns in Melt Glass, these are some options for y'all. Um, but I have 109 pieces and that's if I managed to actually grab all of them from around the house. I think I did because I even have my utensil holder from the kitchen. So I am gonna go ahead and just kind of show you around a little bit and then I'm gonna talk to you about the individual pieces that I have as well as give you a little bit of history on Indiana Glass Company and of course I totally recommend that you get a book um, they are still out there um, books on glass companies I mean not just books um, so that way you can also see the different patterns that things were available in and there are a couple of things that are like unicorns for me for my Indiana Glass Company collection that I would like to have at some point that I still do not. Um, and then I noticed too, <clears throat> when I was pulling all of this together, uh, one, I didn't have a, big, a table big enough. And two, I noticed that there were a couple of pieces that I was short on that I was really kind of surprised. Um, I would have thought I had a full service for 12 and um, I almost do but I definitely have a service for six in most pieces. So that being said, I would like some additional serving um, bowls and I would like um, in the harvest grape. I mean, I have them in other patterns, which, you know, it really doesn't matter. I can mix and match, but I'm just saying, like if you were to go and like have a complete collection of and go all out for it, then it'd still be nice to have these other pieces to add to the set. Um, what else? I think that might be it. So we will go ahead and just kind of get started. And um, yeah, I'll just kind of whiz you around a little bit so you guys can see the entire collection as it sits. And then we'll start talking about individual pieces. Mm -hmm. lot of a lot. Um, so I started collecting milk glass when I was 12. And of course it began, um, as I had said in a previous video, it began with anchor hawking. Um, now of course the Indiana glass is, all of this is actually thanks in part to my husband 
because he kind of got me out of that anchor hawking phase where I just had only the white with the gold rim and began my collection in just white moat glass. And the pieces that he got for me that began all of this are, God, and it's ironic, I suppose, um, also sandwich plates and cups and these. So I do have these. Now, I think in a previous video, when you look these up online, um, you'll come across so many different things because there's so many people that are selling milk glass online and a lot of pieces get, um, I don't want to say misgendered because that's not what it is, but mislabeled to which company they are from. And in the case of these, in my original video, I believe I said that they were Westmoreland because I kept finding Westmoreland as the maker of this glass. It is not. So that would be a correction. If I could correct it in that video, I would, but whatever. Um, and at that point in my collection, you will see, um, while I had a lot of milk glass, I have like literally probably quadrupled easily, if not more, what I had in that original video. Um, because what I have now is 109 pieces of Indiana glass that's just Indiana glass. Um, that's not including all my Anchor Hawking that I still collect, as well as Westmoreland, true West Westmoreland, Fenton, Fostoria, Imperial, Federal. I mean, I, it's endless at this point. Um, so that being said, um, this is actually Indiana glass. Okay, and it is the Harvest Grape. And they didn't really do us any kind of a service at all by everybody deciding that they needed to make a grape pattern. I'll just throw that out there to the universe. It was not helpful at all because everybody did a grape pattern. But, so there's this, sorry, my big head. Um, and it goes with the coffee cups, like so coffee, tea, whichever. So he got me a set of 14 with the cup and the plate. And then I also have the taller water glasses that also came from that. And there are a couple of other like miscellaneous pieces. I don't remember now. I think there are a couple of vases, but for $6 at an estate sale. Yes, you heard me right. I said $6. The woman sold me everything that she had and it was $6. I, can't, I just was like, oh my gosh. I mean, and you can't pass that up. And so that's kind of what apparently was my trigger <laughs> to begin collecting all the milk glass in Oklahoma. Um, and since then, like I said, I have added a lot to my collection. So I absolutely love these pieces. I love the fact that they are pure white and they are so um, mm -mm -mm. they're so easy to use for everything. I mean, they match everything. They go with everything. I mean, it's incredible. So since that first, um, and before that, all I had, like I said, before this, all I had was the Anchor Hawking slash Fire King. Because if you watch my other video, you know, Anchor Hawking and Fire King are the same company. Um, so before that, that's all I had was the white with the gold edge to it. And now I have like so much of this and I still do love and treasure my anchor hawking with the gold rim because it's just so beautiful. Like at Christmas time, um, I used to use them for Easter and um, this year we had to work on Easter so I didn't do anything big for that. I still have to make our Easter dinner so you might just see me bust out some of these. Um, because I love using my pieces. As you will see, because I left the utensil holder as it is, because I didn't want to take all the utensils out of it, um, and that sits beside my stove and gets used. Um, I also use milk glass for salt and pepper, um, and then also for sugar, but you'll see that eventually. But today we're just gonna talk about Indiana glass as I babble on about everything else. So, I now have 18 luncheon plates and 18 coffee cups. 
tea cups, whatever cups, these, whatever you would drink. I mean, I'm sure you can have hot chocolate in here if you wanted to, whatever. Um, a really small portion of soup if it makes you happy. Then to go with that, I have saucers as well. Okay. So I also have the saucers, uh, but you could, you know, for a luncheon service or whatever, if you wanted to just use the water cups and not use these for saucers. You can put a piece of bread on here. No one's gonna care. These I only have six of, so I still need to get six more. So that's, you know, that's out there to the universe. I need six more of these, but they're gorgeous. I love them. Of course, I love everything, right? And then I have, now these I actually have, what is it? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. 13. I have 13 dinner plates. So I have a service for 12 plus one, just in case, um, dinner plates. And these are so gorgeous. Look how beautiful that is. And it's so shiny. I love these. I love my harvest grape pattern. Like I said, there's a lot of people that don't care for the harvest grape pattern. And it always makes me giggle when I see a video come out and someone is showing their milk glass. And they're like, I have grape, but I really don't like grape. Why do you buy it? <laughs> if I didn't like something, I wouldn't buy it. But to each their own. I just think it's funny. But um, milk glass in Oklahoma is plentiful. Like whether it's at the antique shops or the estate sales, yard sales, whatever. Even the uh, flea market, you can find milk glass. So that being said, so I have, uh, like I said, I have 13 of these. Oddly enough, I only have one of these. I could have sworn I had a pair, but I don't know. I can only find one and apparently I only have one. And this is the candle holder. And this is on a pedestal. I When I did look these up, um, I don't know, I find it interesting. To me, this is a pedestal. Like, it's not a foot, but a lot of things come up as footed. And I guess that's because, you know, when you think of like wine glasses and such, they're, you know, they're like footed or what have you, but I don't know. To me, this was always a pedestal base, but I could just, I don't know, it could just be a me thing, but. So to me, this is a harvest grape taper holder footed. And um, I probably only have one, so I'll have to be adding another one of these to my collection for sure. Um, now I have sherbets, also footed, or also pedestal. And um, these can be sherbet, ice cream, I mean, any kind of ice cream really doesn't be sherbet. And um, you can do a pudding. And if you wanted to, you could use these for a berry bowl. I mean, these would be great for berries also. Um, let's see. These I got at the shop. The gal that had them had them on sale. I got them 20% off. So they were just like a couple dollars a piece. And again, the Harvest Grape. Um, if you watched my last haul video, um, you'll see these last, these two pieces that um, I have right here. And I just, cause I, those, those would have been in that part of that haul. So here is the pedestal compote, and it's a big size. I mean, it's a good size cat hair because, you know, four cats, you're gonna have cat hair. Um, but yeah, I love this piece. It is so beautiful. Love, love, love. I love how like dimensional everything is. Oh, I love these pieces. I just can't even begin to tell you. But love, love. Okay, so this, is my newest pitcher. And then I'll run around and, and I'll grab the other one that I'm using for utensils so you guys can see it. But look at how gorgeous that is. Oh, so beautiful. And then I'll, I'll grab the other one so you guys can see the difference. And then um, I'll kind of talk about the differences a little bit. And I should also be giving you guys some history, shouldn't I? Hmm, I am like failing at this miserably. Okay, so Let's start with this because I want to show you this and then the other one. So I'm gonna go grab the other picture real quick and then I will so, show you. Da -da -da -da. <sighs> okay. Oh, real quick going back to when my husband got me that set for $6. These were the glasses that were part of that. And they're like a nice size water glass or 
whatever glass. So those are lovely. I only have not, um, 11, which is like, why don't I have 12? Who knows? But I have 11. Um, okay, so this was the first Indiana glass pitcher I ever got. And we got it at the Rank Antique Shop here in Oklahoma City. Um, it wasn't very much. I want to say it was like eight or twelve dollars. Eight or twelve, I can't remember. Because there is a chunk missing right here if you can see it. But you know me, I don't care. It wasn't like I was planning on selling this stuff. Um, so here's my first picture. And this is how it sits on my counter. Um, what is that? Oh, I don't know. Um, it sits on my counter holding utensils. This is what it does. Um, but anyhow, so if you look at this one and you see how it has this seam here, and it's a little bit more of a crude pattern. Now, this is going to be all pressed glass. So of course, you're going to have seams, which I totally get. And I'm not a problem with the seams. I just want you to show the difference in the, um, the quality of the two as I bang them together, which is totally helpful for the glass, I'm sure. This one weighs so much compared to this one, which is only kind of heavy because it has all the utensils in it. But if you look at them, they are slightly different. And then if you look at the tops, they are still very different. So seams I get, seams I don't care about, I don't care about any of that. But what I want to tell you is, okay, so now we're going to kind of discuss a little bit of the history because it kind of goes to my luncheon plates as well. So um, in 1896, and this will make a difference, in 1896, the National Glass Company opened in Denkirk, Indiana. Um, it went bankrupt in 1907, which is also when a group of investors led by Frank W. Mary um, bought the Dunkirk facility and started Indiana Glass Company. Now, like, as I said, they're all pressed glass in this case. However, um, they're no further pressed. They also did blown glassware and they have done pieces for other companies. Um, but they're also known for lamp fonts which I think that just means like the base of the lamp and um, traditional lamps, as well as tableware, which is what you'll see here in my collection. Um, what I have in most of my milk glass, well, I do have a few like oil lamps and lamps and that sort of thing. A majority of my um, milk glass is usable for the table for dinnerware. Um, they also made a lot of vases and I do have a couple of planters and um, a tall vase in the harvest grape. They also made goofus glass, depression glass, and carnival glass. So Indiana glass, as you know, if you've seen any um, of the carnival glass pieces, they have like the iridescence to them. Marigold is one of their colors and very popular in the marigold, but you'll see it also in the, the purple, the blue, and a green, as well as like a red color. And so they're well, really well known for that as well. Um, this I found interesting. So if anybody is old enough to remember, I don't know if they've all closed now or not. Um, I don't think we have any left where we live here, but A&W Root Beer, they had like the car hops and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and Ethan Glass was the original maker of their, their root beer mugs. I had no idea, but yeah, those were all Indiana Glass. How fascinating. Um, so during 1957, um, so, Keep in mind, they started in like, so 1907 is when National Glass went bankrupt and then the investors began, you know, decided to buy. But uh, so from what I can tell, Indiana Glass didn't actually really start doing really anything until 1908. So from 1908 to 1957, it was just Indiana Glass. Um, however, in 1957, Lancaster Lens Company bought a controlling interest in the company and then renamed themselves the Lancaster Glass Company, right? Which makes sense. Um, so Indian Glass Company was still a separate entity. They were just a subsidiary of Lancaster Glass. 
Um, so in, 19, in the 1960s, they had a reorganization of their companies and um, they became a subsidiary, Indiana Glass Company did, became a subsidiary of Lancaster Colony Corporation, um, which is kind of important if anyone remembers the Tierra Glass. So Tierra Glass um, was something that they did in the 70s and um, uh, there was another resurgence of glass and tableware um, that, for um, Indiana Glass and um, they introduced what was called um, tiara. So the Lancaster Colony's tiara exclusives, which was done through home, port home parties. So if you think kind of like um, Tupperware or Princess House, um, what's another one? Pampered Chef, uh, Norwex, like I do. So they were just, um, so you would go into someone's home and you would show them like, I mean, if you imagine that this was like some lovely piece of black tiara glass or something. Um, and so you could pick out of a catalog and they came in all different colors, everything from um, black to white and all the colors in between. Okay, and so um, Tiara exclusives went from the 1970s all the way to 1998, which I thought was amazing. That's a really long run um, with people selling glassware. Then in 2002, the Dunkirk plant closed, and in 2008, they had an Oklahoma plant also under the um, Lancaster Colony, Indiana Glass name, and it closed in 2008. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. But what brings me back to all of this? So there's really no way for me to properly date all of my pieces, um, they could be anywhere from the 50s, you know, earlier, obviously, all the way through. But I think you can kind of tell by the quality of the glass. And the reason why I say that is because this piece is heavy. Um, yes, there's gonna be some seams to it because it is a pressed glass. Okay, but look at how shiny and thick this glass is like, I don't know. It's nice and thick and it's lovely. Um, but the way that this part here is molded upwards and it's quite seamless um, and just the opacity of the glass. Now compare that to this one. And also I will show you on the handle of this one. While there is a seam here I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can get it to pick up a little bit better. You can see the seam here. Right, right there. It's not much of a seam up here. It's very smooth. Okay. This glass, I'll go ahead and take the utensils off. Um, if you look, this one has the seam all the way through. It wasn't trimmed very well. Um, it's much, much thinner, and there's a much heavier seam all the way around this part here. And um, so, I mean, it could be a number of things, but I feel like this was probably a piece made after the acquisition by Lancaster. Um, so I feel like this would be an, a newer piece, per se, compared to this one, which I believe is an older piece and I could have them backwards who the hell knows I just know that they were they appear to have been made at two different times in the company's history so looking at it and just feeling this I feel like this one's a little bit older um, and that's just my own personal opinion you know take it as you will but having handled a lot of Indiana glass and a lot of other um, milk glass and you know glass companies glass weird sentence um, I just feel like this one's older and definitely um, a much higher quality, which doesn't make me love it any more or less than my other pieces. Because, you know, I don't have favoritism like that. I just point out the stuff. So, um, I'm putting this back because I want them to just sit on the couch. So anyhow, so having said that, I noticed, because like I said, I had, you know, my pieces kind of, strewn all over the place because that's how I do. 
Um, I noticed when I was checking out my sandwich trays or my luncheon trays that some were very, very smooth, like that picture, the, the one I think is an older picture. <clears throat> and then there's this one. Now, can you see? Can you hear that? It's kind of weird, right? So I have some sandwich trays that have this more um, rough texture on the bottom. I mean, the top is still like, you know, normal. I mean, it's still pretty, but I have other pieces that are soft and smooth. Let me see if I grab them out here. Ugh. There we go. So I have other pieces that are completely smooth on the back. And then if you just look at like the grapes, let me see. So see how those grapes look like they're kind of like poked, like they poked out the grape a little bit. It's kind of like, you know, when grapes are kind of struggling a little bit at the grocery store. And then look at those ones. They're perfectly rounded. So I'm going to say that some of the luncheon trays are older than some of the other ones. Um, this one, I don't even tell, but even just like the amount of translucency in the glass is different with the piece I feel like is older compared to the one that's not as old. Um, and then I have one, I kid you not, that's like literally smack dab in the middle. It has a kind of a smooth bottom, but not quite. And then it has a little, and it, you, can just, you can feel it, it feels a little bit different. So it's just kind of interesting to me. Um, but that's one of the fun things about collecting glass is that um, you can learn so much about the history um, of something. Let me see. Is this one of them? Oh, yeah. And then this is the one, like, as you can see, can you see how it's kind of rough there? So this is one of the other ones. And, and if you look at those grapes there, they're not quite cut out as well. Like, they're not pressed in as well or whatever. So I just thought it was interesting. Um, maybe I'm just a really lonely human being. I don't know. Okay, so putting those all back. So like I said, I just think it has to do with the age and, um, you know, because there were a couple of transition periods within um, Indiana glass history. So um, this is another piece that I have that I love also in the um, harvest grape pattern, but this is actually just the fruit bowl. So it has like kind of a, a generic fruit, I guess. Because if you look at it, you can see everything, including grapes. So I guess this would just be the harvest, maybe? Harvest pattern? I don't know. But when it's sitting, you can really just kind of see the grapes, mostly. Um, and so I have this big old fruit bowl that I love. And I think this was a Christmas present, and I think Roger got it for me at the shop. Hmm. That was, like, loud. Okay. So showed you that I got a little itching sorry uh, um, 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 um I showed you the sherbet mm -mm. okay let me grab a couple other pieces so I can show them also and then I'll put these ones back because I need to go back so still keeping with our harvest grape um let's see we'll put this picture back okay um so harvest grape. I have this planter compote. Honestly, you probably use it for anything. I've never used it as a planter. I use it on my counter to hold our, um, our can koozies in it. But it's a good size. I mean, I guess if you want to drink, you could have yourself a big old glass, but isn't that lovely? So I have one of those. I have one of these vases, vases. And you can see the seam there. Now this, honestly, and it's... So when I was three, my father passed away. And whenever we'd go to the cemetery and put flowers on his headstone, this kind of reminds me of that. The vase that they have at the cemetery. Kind of a morbid thing, but I love it. Um, I'm going to say that a lot because I love every piece. So, and then also I have the wine goblet or wine glass, whatever. I have five of these. Yeah, I have five of these. Um, mm -mm, do I have anything else in Harvest Grape that y'all have not seen? I think that's everything in Harvest Grape. 
If not, I guess we'll just circle back around to it. So now I'm going to show you some pieces that are not harvest grapes. So if you're not a harvest grape fan and you still want to collect milk glass, I'm going to show you a couple of other options that Indiana Glass Company has um, that are not grapes. So one sec, I'll be right back. So to start us off, I have this beautiful quilted. Um, it's the quilted pattern. It's a ruffle edge rose bowl. So if you see that. And I actually have two of these. Um, the other one is in, is holding the plastic daisies. I think I've shown. You've seen them in a couple of different videos. Um, and those are over there. Sorry, my guys in the G. My nose does it every time. So I love this pattern. I think it's so gorgeous. And if I could find other pieces in this pattern, I'd be super excited. But I have two of these. And see that lovely roughly edge? So pretty. Is that a rose bowl? And then I have this one, which is also a bowl, has a little bit of a pedestal foot there. And um, this is actually in the Constellation Geometric pattern. Isn't that like gorgeous? So if you were going for like a very mid-century look in your home and wanted to incorporate some milk glass, this would definitely work out well I think it's beautiful it has a lovely bottom it's a lovely bottom okay and then I have two of these I don't know what the pattern on this there. is it has like a basket on there over here um, and then it also has like the swag there and then it has the lace edge so this is very similar to the anchor hawking um, old colony, I think is what it's called. Again, I always get the names mixed up. But the lace edge here is different. And then this one has a square base to it, a square pedestal. So, um, beautiful. I love this. And I have two of those. Now, this I thought for the longest time was like the weirdest, um, I was like, what an odd um, wine glass. It's not, it's actually a planter. <laughs> and what you would do is you're gonna see like in here, it has like these little like tippy tabs. Those are so you can put like um, a frog, like a, a flower frog into the bottom of it. And then you would put your arrangement in there. And so I have one like this, but I have two like this. And then of course you can see there's like little tabs there and that's what holds the frog. Um, so it gives it a level spot in the container. Um, if I ever open up like a wedding venue business, I'm set, right? Cause I've got like all this stuff, but it's gorgeous. It's so big. Could you imagine like this on a table, like a couple of them? So I would actually like to get a couple more of these smaller ones. Cause I think that would be like so gorgeous. Like just kind of like staggered down a table so and there's those and this is in the teardrop pattern okay so teardrops very simple you know not very fancy schmancy but super lovely so again if you're not into the harvest grape pattern these are a couple options and then I'll be back with a couple more options so here are the last couple of pieces I have that are not harvest grape this is missing the top. So there would have been like a, um, like a domed top. It's kind of like this lovely pattern, kind of a corrugated pattern to it. Um, and you can see again, it has that lace edge, just like the other two previous little compotes had. Okay. So there would have been a lid to this. This could have been a butter. Um, in fact, I think I've seen it listed as a butter. I use it in my kitchen and it holds all of my like scrubby brushes <laughs> for like washing up dishes in the sink and stuff. So that's what this gets used for. And also the brushes you use to clean out those metal toothbrushes. So that's where this lives. Um, so I don't need the top, so it doesn't bother me that there is no top because what I do with the top of all is just using it the way I am. Um, so it works for me. And again, 
I love it. So there's that. Um, this I thought for the longest time. Okay. So I love milk glass and they made milk glass for literally everything. Like anything that you could think of that you could use it for, they found a way. Um, we're talking cabinet pull, like the little cabinet knobs, drawer pulls, door knobs, um, light fixture, like you know, the chain has a little ball. We have um, a blue and white Delft one in our, for our fan in our bedroom. So anything that you could think of that you could use milk glass for, they used it for. I thought for sure that these were made so for like coney dogs. <laughs> so I was thinking that these would be fantastic for hot dogs. They're actually a celery tray and they're in the pretzel pattern. So now that I know what it is, I'm kind of like, cool. Uh, I don't think we eat that much celery in life, at least not most of us, that I need like this quantity of it. So I would still probably use this for like Coney Island dogs, or the old Coney dogs. Um, but yeah, so when I read that, I was like, oh my gosh, only I would think hot dog when it's supposed to be like relish or celery or something. You can probably use this also for like asparagus, like any of your longer veg, I don't know, uh, rhubarb or whatever. But I just thought it was kind of funny that I, this whole entire time I had them sitting on my shelf, I kept thinking, oh, those would be so cool for hot dogs like during the summer. Because I have three of them and there's three of us in the house right now. So there's that. So if I ever end up using them for that, I'll take a picture and put it on, in, on Instagram or something. But so yeah, so I have three of these bad boys. Um, oh, they would also make incredible, I think, but I guess it just goes to like the kind of food I like to eat. Um, banana, like banana split. I was gonna say banana sundae, that's not what I meant. For like banana split um, bowls. I think they'd be awesome for that too. So I mean, you can put your bananas in there and then you have your ice cream. I think that'd be lovely. My husband hates bananas though, so, but whatever. I love those. Um, and then last but not least, and also banana related, oddly enough, um, my husband got this for me at the shop and I don't think she was very expensive because I don't, if it's at the shop, I mean, I'm really hard pressed to pay much of anything from a glass through the shop. Um, oh, I do have one other thing I have to show you or two. So this is my banana stand. Um, this lives on my counter and it's where I put, I have a towel that sits across it. And when I dry off like um, my vintage utensils or silverware, they dry in here. <laughs> so yeah, because my husband doesn't like bananas, so we never have bananas in the house. But that's what this gets used for. I call them taco holders, even though I know it's not a taco holder, but it just always makes me think of tacos. So yeah, this is also Indian glass. Now I did see this listed as Westmoreland. Westmoreland has one that's similar, but, um, if you saw my Westmoreland video, you saw the compote I had, the covered dish. It has like the, the interesting little, st little like pedestal to it. It's, it has a pedestal base like that, as opposed to this one. Um, they're similar, but they're different. Like, and when you look them out, you see them side by side, you'll realize like, oh yeah, that's totally different. Um, but this one is the Indiana glass version. And again, not a harvest grape pattern for those of you who are not into harvest grape. Um, last but not least, Wild Rose. So I have, oh, sorry, that's so loud. I could have sworn I had more than one of these, but I can only find one, so it's weird. But this is the Wild Rose Berry Bowl. Um, I call them cabbage roses, but if you've ever seen like a cabbage rose, um, there's a, t a, a variation, I guess, or a species of a cabbage rose or something that looks very similar. And when I was looking them up, someone else had written cabbage rose. And I thought, oh yeah, I guess it kind of looks like cabbage rose, but they're actually the wild rose. So, but they actually remind me of um, the Tudor rose is what it reminds me of. So I have one like that, and then I have four of these. And you can actually see the rose better on the bigger one. And doesn't that kind of look like the, the Tudor rose? But it's wild rose. And it has like the swoopy doopy leaves. And I think that's why it kind of reminded me of, and I agree that it looked kind of like a cabbage rose, is because the leaves are so 
dandelion-esque, I guess. Because typically when I see a rose, you see like the little, the sharper edged, what do they call those sawtooth edged leaves, as opposed to these ones, which are kind of a little bit more sweeping, but it could just be, you know, because they had to get them on there. These actually remind me of dandelions, <laughs> dandelion leaves. But the pattern is called wild rose. So there's that. And it does have the little foots. See, so this to me is a foot, this little nibby knob. And of course, there'll be different sizes. And this to me is a pedestal. But what's ifs? Like I said, I have four of these and one of the smaller ones, which is an interesting thing because I thought it was I thought it was gonna be in reverse. I thought I'd have one of the big ones and then four of the smaller ones, but eh, who knows? Who cares? So I hope this gives you guys some inspiration. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you like these kinds of videos, please subscribe, hit the like button, um, hit the bell notification so you guys know when I'm uploading videos. I'm trying to upload a lot more often um, as I'm finding time to. I don't really have like a set schedule, just when it seems like it's been a little bit, I try to upload a video. Um, but I hope you guys like learning about the different milk glass companies. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below. Um, I do try really hard to answer any questions or comments that I get. Um, I appreciate you guys so much for being here. We are almost at 100 subscribers and I am so excited. And um, I still have so many milk glass companies that I need to go over because as I was pulling all this out, I realized I have even more different companies. So yeah, it's kind of a problem, I think. Um, I am on TikTok now. I'm also on Instagram. Um, I have a personal Facebook. I don't really do much on Facebook. Um, but if you'd like to connect on Instagram or TikTok, um, I would love that. And thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate you guys spending some time with me today. I hope you guys like the video. And I hope it wasn't too rambly. <sighs> I like to talk. It's a thing. So thank you guys again so much for being here. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Remember to collect what you love and to love what you collect. And until next time, bye guys.